Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Direct Sellers Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Perry, and I'm realizing that if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the mess behind me. I totally forgot to clean that up before we went live. And here's the here's the other thing. Wait, not live, but started recording. And here's the other awesome thing. Um, this is my take two. So in between take one and take two, I could have gone over there and cleaned it up. But alas, I did not. That's okay because this is real life. You know what I'm saying? Like what you see is what you get. Hi, I'm Rachel. This is real life. <laughs> so much to tell you guys about. Today, we're going to be diving into this whole like getting new customers thing. And we've talked about this ad nauseum really before, but I, I kind of want to talk about it from a different perspective today because I had a very interesting conversation with someone who used to be in tippy top leadership in a very, very popular company. And we were discussing some things and she brought up some really great points that I wanted to share with you today. Um, kind of blew my mind a little bit, just gave me a different perspective on things. So we're going to dive into that. But before we do that, I just want to share with you, I just came back from an incredible few days in New York. I'm part of a program called Elevate. It's all about becoming an elevated CEO and showing us how we can serve our people better. And you are my people. So I went for you. And it was literally the most mind-blowing event that I've ever been to. And just to give you a little perspective, I have been in the online business world for probably like 11 years, I think. No, is that right? Yes. Oh my gosh. I've been in this industry for a very long, long time. And I have been part of huge groups. I've been part of like big name groups. I have been part of really no just big name groups, but I have never experienced an event like the one that I experienced this past week. And when I say like, this was truly the best event of my life, it truly was the best event of my life. And I, I mean, listen, I've emceed events. I have attended events as a student. I, 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 I've been to a lot of events. I've been to a lot of mastermind retreats. I've been to, I've just been to a lot of things. Just, I, I want you to understand when you have a coach, when you hire a coach or you follow someone who is coaching you, it's really, it, sh it should be something that they talk about often, basically how they are learning more, how they are investing in themselves. Because if you are learning from a coach who doesn't understand the value of investing in themselves, there's, there's a whole thing missing there because if they're asking you to invest in them and then they're not investing in themselves, there's that to me is a red flag. Um, I take it very seriously. Like I, I want to be a great coach and the only way I can become a great coach is to be constantly learning and bettering myself and bettering my skill and my craft. And I think it's just really, really important that all coaches do this. All the people who teach you should also be learning. And I think there's something to be said about learning outside of your company as well. I think when, when I was first in direct sales years and years ago, that wasn't quite a thing. It wasn't as much a thing because the companies provided so much free training, which they still do. But it's, I think it's important to get outside perspectives. And you know what? Like everyone isn't going to resonate with me and my perspectives. And that's okay because I know that I am supposed to serve those who need to be served, right? Like the people that resonate with me. You might be like, you're too much, Rach. And that's okay because you're, I'm just not your person. But then there are other people who are like, Rachel, I want to be in all of your programs. Sign me up now. They are my people, right? So anyway, I went to this event and for me, and if you follow me on Instagram, you saw this. It was like I tapped into the Rachel I truly am. So that might sound silly, but for the longest time, and I really do think it sort of started around the time that I left the tag team or the tag team broke up. And for those of you that don't know what the tag team is, um, I was in a business partnership um, that ended in 2019. We had been together for seven years and we taught direct sellers how to party on Facebook using the 30 minute Facebook party formula. 
And that was an amazing experience and a wonderful journey. And Amanda was my business partner and we just literally had the best time. And it just got to the point where it was time to move on. And I literally did not know who I was without Amanda. I don't know if I've ever shared this. I was like, who am I? Like, who am I as a solopreneur? I don't know who that person is. And I think I went through a a really long, I I think that I take a really long time to process things. I'm learning. (laughs) Um, I, and you know, I still think there's things that haven't, I'm not all, no, I I was going to say, I'm not all here, but I am all here. Rachel energy is back. But I think for, you know, we wore wigs and we made jokes and I was Jasmine and I I had, I had it, 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 I was different with, with Amanda. Like we, we played off each other. We were hilarious. We were fun and that's who I am, but I didn't know how to be that person on my own. And so for years and years, I've had people say, oh, Rach, like where's, where's Rachel that we used to know? Things like that. And that really bothered me because then I couldn't, I was like, I don't know. Is she not here? It's like, is this not me? Like, what are you talking about? And, um, still felt like I was still trying to find my place and I couldn't quite figure it out, um, until this weekend. And I don't know what it was. I definitely shine in rooms with large amounts of people. Like I just do. And this, this group is a group where I feel completely supported. I feel completely safe. And I felt like I was amongst my people. And so when you have a room like that, that they cultivated, they put together this place. They've, they have, the, the leaders of this program have created such a space for entrepreneurs to come and feel supported in every way possible in their business and a safe place where they can share their vulnerabilities and their fears and all that. And they created a space where they challenged us and they stretched us and we came out the other side, even stronger versions of ourselves. And we'd walked in two days before and I had never truly experienced it to this level. And, and actually to be totally transparent, a lot of the, what my three to, current three to five K program is based on is based on the experience I've had in my, in this program that I'm a part of because I have felt so seen and so supported and so loved and so safe and, and so wise. I've even felt like this massive amount of wisdom, which usually when I'm in a room with people who are further along in their business than I am or whatever, I end up feeling like less than, but I didn't, I felt like they were my peers. And that's what I've modeled this three to five K program, which by the way, the name will be changing to something with 10 K because like, why stop at three to five K? You know what I'm saying? But what I've modeled that program after is this, because this program that I have now is the way I'm feeling inside this Elevate coaching program that I'm a student of. I want all direct sellers to feel that. I want all direct sellers to experience that. I want this for you. And so at this event, I was just blown away. And it was literally like I was shedding this self of like four years that I've had where I've been sort of trying to figure out who I am. This is so silly. It might, it might sound absurd actually, but this is, this has been my journey. And I really want to share my journey with you because when I share my journey with you, I think, I hope that if it enables one person, one person who's listening to do the same, to follow the same sort of journey, to recognize that they're not alone, then it's worth it to me. So this weekend, it was just such a huge blessing and such a huge, like I had breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. And it wasn't like these big, huge, massive breakthroughs like, oh, I'm going to create this program or whatever. It was more like, oh, this is what's holding me back in my business. Or, oh, this is why I didn't want to change the name of three to five K or, oh, this is where the Rachel is that we've been looking for for so long, like really crazy things. But What's so beautiful about it, though, is that I was able to tap into this energy, the energy that I remember. And I, I've i had great energy for years, y'all. Like, don't get me wrong. But I feel like I found me again. And for the longest time, I think I'd been searching for her. I lost her along the way. And now she's back. Sister is back. Okay. So um, I'm just 
so happy to be here. And you know what? I wouldn't trade the journey for anything in the world. I wouldn't trade this experience for anything in the world because I had to go through all of that to be here. I had to go through all of that in order to be able to serve you as well as I serve you. And that's the other thing, y'all. Like the things I have in store for you is unparalleled. Like it's never happened before, I believe. Like this is, this is what the direct sales industry needs. They need what I am creating for you. And I'm so excited about it. So that's kind of what's been going on in my life. It's kind of a crazy time. I, my voice sounds a little funny because I've been fighting some kind of virus. Y'all, I took John Mark to tour colleges last week or this week. I don't even know what day it is. What? Y'all, I cannot. First of all, how am I here where I, my son is old enough to go and look for colleges? He's 17. He'll be a senior next year. And I truly remember going to visit colleges for me. So that's weird. That's really weird. So anyway, big things are happening over here. And I'm just so excited that I get to kind of experience all of this and I get to share it with you and, and serve you, you know, even deeper than I did before. Okay. So here's what I want to talk to you about now, <laughs> now that I've kind of talked a lot about me. Um, I want to talk to you about the whole customer thing. So a lot of you are saying that you can't find customers. And, you know, I remember I have a growth guide. Like if you want the growth guide, just message me on Instagram growth guide, and I will send it to you. And that lays out how you can start growing. Okay. Without having to rely on parties, how you can start adding new customers to your list. The thing is, here's what I'm seeing the problem. And, and this kind of came from this conversation that I was having with this previous leader of this massively big company. She's like, the direct sellers are not, they're not reaching out. They're not, they're, there's this fear of, of stepping out of their comfort zone of, I think, here's what I think is happening. We are thinking that Social media is the be all and end all of our business. And when you post reels and when you make carousel posts and when you do your stories and you don't get any sales or people aren't interested in your business, you're like, nothing's working for me. It's just not working for me. I can't do it. Like there's things are drying up, but that's not true. Before social media, we had to get out of our comfort zone and talk to people at Target. Okay. Yes, we did. Okay. Yes, we did. You heard me. Yes, we did. Okay. Okay. That was never super comfortable. Before that, we had to get on our phone and talk to people, right? We had to make connections at parties with people we didn't know. We had to ask people if they'd like to host a party, people that we didn't know. It was very uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable, but it was such a great lesson and it was such a great experience. Did I want to do any of that at the time? No. I didn't, but you know what I did want? I did want to make some money. I did want to grow a team and I knew what I had to do in order to get there was not going to be super easy. And when I say it's uncomfortable, I've said this and I'll say it again. Discomfort doesn't always equal, um, like it, you can be stretched and be, be stretched to step out of your comfort zone. And there are things that might make you feel uncomfortable that you shouldn't be doing, right? Like cold messaging. That's gross. That's not getting out of, that's getting out of your comfort zone, but that's gross. But like, Trying new things is uncomfortable, but it's stretching you. And that's what needs to happen. We cannot keep relying on social media to do it for us. We cannot. If you are only relying on social media and you are not getting out of your network and you are not going beyond your friends and family, you are not going to grow a sustainable business, period, end of story. You've got to do that. You've got to get uncomfortable. You've got to like stretch the, like push against those walls of your network. You've got to do the uncomfortable things. You've got to share the business. If you want to grow your team, y'all have to talk about the business. You have to be having conversations. And that is the foundational piece that I talk about, excuse me, in my three to 5k program. It is that piece, that conversational piece. And when I say conversations, it's not just in social media. It can be an email. It can be in person. It can be at parties, wherever it is. You need to be having conversations and conversations aren't just you commenting on people's posts. Conversations are two way. People are talking back. Okay. That is what needs to be happening. I'm going to cough and I apologize. 
<coughs> and I'm recording this podcast so late that I'm not going to be able to have it edited. <laughs> so you get to hear my cough and my cold and all the good things. Okay. But back to my soapbox. Seriously, you've got to figure out how you're going to get outside and beyond your network. And you know what? I came across a coach the other day who is in the same industry who's teaching people to cold message. And y'all, that's not it. That's not it. Now, is it connecting with people? You don't know? Yes. But cold messaging to me is sending a message to someone you do not know, you do not have a relationship with, offering them a product, a service, or in quotation marks, the opportunity. No, that's gross. Don't do that. That's not the way to grow your network. The way to grow your network, though, is to connect with people, is to get involved in things outside of your normal life, like beyond your computer, okay? It's having a freebie out there. It is, sometimes it's like running some ads. Please don't hear me say that I think you should start running Facebook ads. That's very complicated. But sometimes there are things that you should be doing. How are you going to get in front of more people? How are you going to serve more people? Just relying on Instagram is not going to grow your business. It's not. And this might be frustrating for you to hear, but it's not. And I'm going to tell you straight up, you've got to figure out how to get out of your box. How are you going to get beyond selling to your friends and family? You got to do it. And changing companies is not the way to do it you're still going to have the same issues. So if you're thinking, I think I want to change the company that I rep because I'm just having a hard time finding people to purchase what I'm currently selling, nothing's going to change when you sell something else because you're still going to be tapping into your friends and family. You've got to get beyond your friends and family. Now, please don't hear me. Don't, don't hear me say, I'm not saying if you need to change companies, that's a bad thing. That's not what I'm saying. But I want you to really think about what is the reasoning behind that. Because when the going gets tough, you got to keep going. Just finding a new company or selling a new product or trying a new platform is not going to be the solution. You've got to be consistent. And you've got to really get uncomfortable and step out of your comfort zone. Where are you going to start making more connections? Where can you do that? Is it get, and, and listen, if you're like, I only want my business to be focused on social media. Okay. Okay. That's fine. But just know that things are going to be a little bit more difficult and you're going to have to, you're going to have to spend some time connecting with other people and having conversations and sharing the type of content that gets results. If you're not getting results, sharing content on your social media, you're missing something. You're either missing that you're, you don't know who you're speaking to. You're not offering solutions to the problems of your ideal customer. You're just getting lost in the noise of it all. You have got to take responsibility and get those customers. You know, companies are changing their way of doing things and people in different, all companies, these companies that I'm hearing for numerous places are getting frustrated because the company is changing their way of doing things. But the reason they might be doing that is because you're not getting new customers. They've got to be selling their stuff too. Bottom line, the companies are a business. The companies need to make money. And if you are not bringing in customers, you're not selling, they got to figure something out. So what are you going to do to make your business stronger? What are you going to do to get more customers? And y'all listen, I have a whole thing. Like there's another podcast, 10 ways to get new customers. Are you going to download it? Are you going to do it? Are you going to, are you going to do what it takes to build a business? Because as an entrepreneur, there are going to be dips and there are going to be, what's the opposite of dip? <laughs> there are going to be high points and low points. Okay. In the low points, what are you going to do to keep working your business? Are you just going to give up? Are you just going to be like, I can't get any new customers? No, you're not. You're going to keep going. So my advice to you is to really start doing the work, take the action that needs to be taken in order for you to get new customers. And might it be uncomfortable? Yeah. Will it stretch you? Yes. Stop hiding behind social media though. Stop it. You've got to really nail down who you are speaking to. And we dive into this in the 35K program, like foundational pieces. Who are you speaking to? That's the key. 
What are their problems? Solve them. Okay. And connect with people beyond social media. You guys, I hope this was helpful. A little bit of tough love. I love your faces. We'll be back here next week for another episode of the Direct Sellers Podcast. Again, if you want that growth guide, that 10 ways to get new customers, just message me on Instagram at Rachel A. Perry Growth Guide, and I will send it over. You are my favorites. I appreciate you listening. Until next week, my friends, take care.